Bo, we've got Chef Marty on the show. I know, I can already smell them Cajun seasonings. Yes, yeah, so good. She's here for Fayetteville Restaurant. Pat! Don't say it. Why? Because sometimes, when you say it, crazy things happen. Okay. Well, yeah, just saying. Maybe I could say it later. Suit yourself, Jason. I'm just warning you. Fayetteville Restaurant. Yeah. That you're doing on purpose, sing like a sing on key. Talk to the girl that intimidates you, pretend that you're brilliant and charming. I said, pretend that you're brilliant and charming. Hey! Oh man, if I don't care, man, told me, son. That's it. Welcome in, everybody. Later with Jason Sewell. Glad you're tuned in. Bo Counts. Hey. You got a thumbs up on the thumbs up. Yeah. I love it. I like it. Can I ask you this, because okay. you are the movie guy. I am. Are romantic comedies, are rom-coms a thing of the past? You, you I, think they're gone? No, Hollywood? they're not. I mean, that 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 movie that uh, kind of took everybody by surprise uh, earlier in 20, right, right at the beginning of the year. Yeah. It was a rom-com. It got really popular on TikTok. Right. The and, one with Sidney Sweeney. That, that yeah, that and it made all the money. And so I think we're going to start seeing more of them, actually. Yeah. But it's such a formulaic genre, guys. Right. Like, I know that they're, it's, it's, it's junk food. Right. Um, you know, you take it for what it is. But I've never been a big rom-com guy. Granted, there are, I mean, if it's got Matthew McConaughey in it, it's probably going to be a good, run, good yeah. one. But I'm just not a fan of the genre. Yeah. Oh, I wonder, do you differentiate between, because, like, you've got all those Hallmark sort of holiday movies that almost stick to the same formula it's as just rom -bombs, rom -bombs. like. Right. Just no thanks. You so know? in your mind, they're kind of like the same thing. The, 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 I think the only gift that they have given to society is all of the memes that come along with them. Okay. You know? The all the social media presence. Yeah. Right? A lot of fun out of that. Yeah, but exactly. Anything that you are looking forward to maybe this spring as we launch into bigger movie <gasps> season? Man, I mean, I'm just looking forward to a little bit of warmer weather. Okay. A little bit of just being able, like, you get cooped up in the winter so yes. long. You're like, the weather's gross. You get to go outside, you get to grow. You get to have your own flower. Yeah. I know. And, uh, you know, with movies, I mean, you've got, you know, a lot of cool stuff coming down oh the pipe. Oh, my gosh. So. I can't wait. Personally, I'm looking forward to Dune. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's going to be a great one. But, hey, speaking of great, we got a great show lined up. Enough chit-chat from us. I am really excited to welcome Sarah King to the program. Huh. Okay, so we're going to be talking about Fayetteville Restaurant Week. Big week mm, here in yummy. the city. Lots happening with that. So she's joining us to fill us in about that. And we've got musical guest Ted Hammock joining us on the program. He has created something really special for Restaurant Week. Also, he's going to bring his very own original song to the show this evening. And then down there at our chef's table, we've got some royalty in the house. Chef Marty is down there. Marty, what are you going to be cooking up for us down there? Well, we're going to do a Louisiana lobster roll, and I brought the perfect bowl for it. Yes. Bless. Aren't you so glad when Marty comes on the show? Yes! Yes. It's I mean, the best. it is always a treat. It's always something amazing, and sometimes the building gets set on fire. That's so <laughs> it <yeah>. does. <laughs> we got something for your taste buds, we got something for your ears, and we got some great conversation. It's all coming your way later. Normally, I try to design a piece by making a quick sketch. And then I go try to find a piece of wood. It kind of depends on the dimensions of the piece and it kind of depends on what type of surface I want the piece to have, whether it's gonna be sanded or whether it's gonna have a rough surface. Um, and then the refinements come with smaller carving tools and um, you just kind of hope that it turns out in the end. Most of the pieces that I have have a, a combination of um, texture and smooth, which increases, you know, um, interest in the piece. Sometimes you get inspiration from just the people around you. It might be something somebody's wearing that has a texture on it. So it's kind of hard to say, but it's everywhere. I think it is everywhere. 
most of my inspiration initially came uh, from other artists. And one of the best things about me and Sandy working together is that Sandy's work doesn't look anything like my work. And it's nice to have a little color around when you're looking at wood. You know, wood is pretty much monochromatic unless Sandy's done some milk paint on hers or something, which kind of spices them up a little bit. And it's a really great opportunity to, to have people come that wouldn't have seen the work otherwise. It's really exciting for me um, to be able to show my 2D work, um, especially I have not shown 2D work when Robin and I have had, um, we've had another instance where we have a show together and now I'm, you know, I'm starting to really push it a little bit more. And so it's, yeah, it's fun to, to see how they all work together. And, and any time you show work, you know, you have a new audience that's looking at it that's never seen it before. That's always a plus. We want to say thank you for the Walton Art Center for having us here. It's been uh, very exciting knowing that it was coming. You know, what more pieces can we finish before they come look so we can offer them some new looks? And uh, so, yeah. We want to thank the staff for putting the show together. Kathy did a great job of curating it, coming down to Little Rock and picking out the work. And uh, we just appreciate the opportunity. everybody welcome back we got sarah king with experience fayetteville joining us down here thanks for being here sarah great to see you oh so glad to be here this morning yes okay so we're talking about uh experience fayetteville first of all i think people maybe need to get a better understanding of what actually is experience fayetteville what do you do there sure well experience fayetteville is officially Fayetteville Advertising and Promotion Commission. Okay. This is not as fun of a name. Right, so you just changed it, kind of changed it up. Experience yeah, Fayetteville. Yeah, yeah, so the Experience Fayetteville is our brand name, and, and what we do is act as the city's convention and visitors bureau, destination marketing organization. We advertise and promote Fayetteville, both to encourage people to come visit, but also we you know give locals a great idea of what's happening in town. Absolutely. If you ever go on the Experience Fayetteville website, it's loaded with opportunities for you to get involved in what's happening specifically in the city. You've always got things going on. You've got a great calendar there that has a bunch of events. What's your role specifically there? What do you do? Sure. I'm that head of marketing and communications. So I, I lead a, a small and mighty team of people who um, work every day to get the word out about Fayetteville and get the word out about what's happening here. So do you um, sort of advertise not only to like the local community and here uh, regionally, but do you go outside of that sometimes and kind of promote Fayetteville and get people to come here as a destination? Absolutely, and that advertising um, is, is around both branding Fayetteville, but also getting the word out about major events here, like um, Northwest Arkansas Pride is one that right. we share wide, um, very widely, um, and events like the one we're talking about today, Fayetteville Restaurant Week. Right, okay, so let's... What, so, Ted, is this a jingle? Do you have a jingle for the week? What's going on? Well, we decided to have some fun this year. Make it a little bit of an earworm so that everybody remembers Fayetteville Restaurant Week. Fayetteville, um, Fayetteville Restaurant Week. I have a feeling oh. this is going to continue happening. Oh, I did Sarah. it again. Um, okay, I love it. It's already in my ear. Tell me, what, what can folks expect from Fayetteville Restaurant Week? Yes, well, it is a week at the very end of February coming right up. Yeah. And we invite all the restaurants in Fayetteville, and you know we've got some good ones That's here, fantastic. to take part. And it's everything from quick service restaurants to fine dining, and they're all offering a little something special this week. It could be uh, free churros. It could be a $55 a plate dinner at Atlas. What? Okay, so Atlas is usually like, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of out of my price range, but a $50 fixed plate sounds like something I yeah, could get Yeah, 55 bucks, get in there, um, get your reservation today, scoop yeah. those up. And some other fine dining restaurants have similar um, offers this week, so it's a great way if there's some place you've been really wanting to try, go ahead and get in there. But then on the other things, the end of things are, you know, folks like Golden Kolache oh, are offering deals that week. The best. So it's it's great deals. There are freebies, um, all kinds of fun things. All of this can be found on our website at experiencefayetteville.com. And yeah. the cheat code there is you can type in expfay.com. Yes, okay. And you can get right to that list of all these offers. And there are dozens and dozens and dozens of offers. That's great. My stomach is already rumbling. I'm glad we've got Chef Maudie on here. Cafe Rue yes. is another uh, 
restaurant that's participating as well Absolutely. this year. Absolutely. Yeah. Bo, I'm curious for you, what restaurants are you, I mean, it's a week long of great food. Is there any that, that are percolating? Well, you uh, know, I'm head? downtown all the time. Right. So I love all our downtown restaurants, but with something like Fayetteville Restaurant Week, that it makes it easy to maybe like take a chance on some of those new ones that are not necessarily in my neighborhood and, and give me an excuse to go venture out and try something that maybe I don't get to see all the time. I know Boca has that wood-fired filet that's just so good. Yes. Maybe give me an excuse to go get another one of those. Yeah, I know. And a place I haven't been to in a while, Pestos by Lance, I think is having something that's as right. well. That's delicious. Uh, Girls Gone Barbecue, you that's mentioned, right. is going to be a part of it as well. I think I saw them on the screen. So. Um, and you also said that, like, obviously we're focused on the local, local businesses. That's awesome and what we should be focused on. But we even have some chains that are also participating. You know, like mentioned Papa John's, maybe, yeah. Whataburger, things like that. So Papa John's is, is offering 30% off your pizza during the week. And, you know, who would turn off your, up your nose at a 30% off pizza? It's a great deal. It. Absolutely. So, yeah, all over, across the spectrum. Some of our, our uh, you know, the classics that you know, Hugo's, for example, is taking oh, part. Of course. But also, like, our newcomers, Hip Cafe is one that's yeah. a little bit off the beaten path. Yes. They do just incredible baked goods, sandwiches, tons of vegan offerings. Okay. Those people are trying to go plant-based. So, like, it, it's a, a chance to discover something new. Yeah, absolutely, yes. So, Bo, again, um, I, we've mentioned like a lot of our favorites and people that we've had on the show specifically, and we've gotten to taste their cuisine. What would you say to the, our Northwest Arkansas audience why they should participate in uh, this week? I mean, if you've been watching the show, it's obvious. Like, like you just said, we've had them all here. We could do an epic clip roll of every person in Fayetteville Restaurant Week. <laughs> And, uh, you. you know, get a little a, a, a bite of Northwest Arkansas. And there's so many amazing things that people can take advantage of. And I know it's really hard. People go, I don't have a budget to eat out all the time. But save. It's worth it. Our flavors here are amazing. Get a taste of the culture. And this is the time to do it, right? You get to save a little money and experience some great fine dining here uh, in, in Fayetteville. Absolutely. And to sweeten the deal, yeah. we are giving away 500 bucks to spend at the Fayetteville restaurant of your choice. All you need to do is uh, tag us on social media and we'll choose someone at random. So go out, take a picture of your plate like you always do anyway. Yeah. Tag us and then we'll select a, a winner. So is that's it tag, tagging experience Fayetteville. Is we're tagging FRW24. FRW24. Okay. What does that stand yeah. for? <gasps> Fayetteville Restaurant Week. Fayetteville Man, that is stuck in my head now. And what's the website, again, where people can go for all this information? That's right, experiencefayetteville.com, or E-X-P-F-A-Y.com. That's it. Thank you so much. That was an excellent opportunity to talk with you about Fayetteville Restaurant Week. Stick around. we got more fun happening later. Right now, let's hear that jingle one more time. One, two, three, four, Fayetteville Restaurant Our musical guest is brought to you by the debut season of The Comedy Zone at Walton Art Center. Happy New Year, I hope it treats you well. Nothing much has changed, at least as far as I can tell. Sorry I've been absent, and I tend to carry on. This is not the world we wanted, but it's the one we're living on. And you can live your life in 24 frames per second. last forever and they always lead you home and I know you're gonna make it on your own Hadn't felt it until the door was closed
Yes, welcome back, everybody. We're down here at the chef's table with Chef Marty Schmidt oh. from Happy New Orleans. And she's got a little like crawfish. Look at How this. You, like that? you gotta show that off. Yeah. So cute. Yes, I love it. So obviously, we're just past Mardi Gras, but you said you're kind of making something that you would have at Mardi Gras. How did you describe that? Right. This is a Louisiana lobster roll. We're just mm. basically mimicking a lobster roll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but we're gonna we're With gonna the lobster of the South. Right. Yeah. And what we what we did was we we boiled our crawfish tails in a little bit of seasoned water that you would do crawfish in. Yeah. Okay. So it gives it that flavor. Yeah. And then I'm gonna give it a good squirt of lemon. Add, add in some even more Always. flavor. Right. And then you gotta have a little celery. Celery, and is that green onion in there too? A little okay. bit of green onion. I thought I recognized that different yeah. green. And you know, if you go, oh, it smells amazing. If you go to New England, some people are purest. It's just lemon and butter. Okay. And then some people do the celery. Yeah, I and like so, the celery. Yeah. I think what it do you? Gives it a little bit of crunch. It it gives it the crunch because the crawfish are tasty, but they need something. They need a little assist. Right. What do you? What did you just gloop in there right right then? Mayo. You know, mayo. Yeah, it's mayo. mayo. What's funny is I'm not a big mayo guy unless it's in something like this. Yeah, yeah. And then it just makes sense. Right. And then this is just a little bit of Creole seasoning because we got to have that little bit of punch. Yeah. yeah. And you see how quick it came together. So, so Mardi Gras mm. day, you would be doing this probably the night before. You'd put it in a Tupperware container. You'd bring it to the parade route, and it's pretty easy is to serve from that there. Like sits in the fridge long longer it sits the better yes, it gets it sort of marries and so what what i do is i'll kind of make this look like a lobster yeah. roll that you would find in in new england yeah look at that and then Just i mean it in. that's yes. it it's I mean, just you make a, it look so you easy. make it look easy <clears throat> i know what people aren't seeing is the hours of laborious insanity that is boiling and peeling <laughs> crawfish tails. You got that like, right. That's my, I love crawfish, you know, and I lived in Louisiana for several right. years. Right. And Here. the thing that, you know, you see these, you go, oh, whip it out, it's so easy. But then your friends are like, hey, I'm making a boil, you want to come over and peel crawfish? And yeah. like six days later, you get that small bowl full. Right. right. So is this something that you serve at the restaurant all the time, all year no. round? No. No. Okay. Now we do serve a fried crawfish pool boy okay. but we don't we don't do the salad you know every now and then if i'm feeling like i want to do something fun i might stuff this in a in a tomato yes. especially during the summer in a tomato i bet right. that's delicious when you're at mardi gras you've got one of these what else do you have with it what would you pair this with what else are people walking around having oh potato salad a uh, fried chicken yeah a popeyes daiquiri. fried chicken a daiquiri mm -hmm. a hurricane um, it's it's just stuff that you can eat pretty much on the go, yeah. and you don't have to warm it up because mm -hmm. you're out on a parade route. Right, you're walking around. You're walking around. You have family. And it's always it's 190 degrees down in New Orleans, <laughs> right. anyway, so it's going to warm itself up. We yes. have an early Mardi Gras. Yeah, we have I know. Early it's, Mardi it's, Gras this year. Yeah, I know. Because usually I, when I think Mardi Gras, I think March, but it's right. you know it just happened in February right. this year, so. But the great thing about it is it'll be back around again this mm -hmm. time next year. Oh right? yeah, we'll be eating more oh, of this. Yeah. Oh, where yes. is 
Where's Cafe Rue Orleans located? If people haven't been there, I don't know if they've been living under a rock, but where can they find you? I feel sorry for them if they haven't been there. <laughs> oh, I know. 23 years this month. Wow. wow. 23 years. Congratulations. Yes, That's yes, huge. Yes. Thank you. It's at 1150 North College, uh, right across the street from the old Washington Regional Hospital. And they got that new little uh, renovated space right yep, next to yep. you guys. Yep, so. uh, it's now called the Clementine oh. on College. That's And adorable. it's Airbnb, eight rooms. They went down to studs. They look really nice. More yeah. Airbnb. So to be fun. In Fayetteville. And traffic, more traffic for us. Because if yeah, you're sure. staying in the Airbnb and you want to come over and have a beer or have a have a um, a pull boy. A pull boy. It's a perfect We're place. We're right there. Yeah, go check Chef out at Cafe Rue Orleans. We're gonna keep eating this. You mm -hmm. stick around. We got more fun happening later. That's our show. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Remember, you can find us out there on your social media platforms or send us an email over at laterwithjasonsool.com. Before we get out of here, we've got to thank all of our amazing guests, including Sarah. Thanks for being here, Sarah. We appreciate it. And, of course, we've got the lobster roll woman herself, Chef Marty from Cafe Rue. Oh, it's so delicious. And how about Ted Hammig playing the music for us? That was great. That's our show. We'll see you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Let's have a lobster roll. Y'all should roll. get one of say? these.